I need you guys to stop buying from these glove brands until you finish this video. For many, many years, three main companies owned the baseball glove world. It was Wilson, Rawlings, and Mizuno, and rightly so because their gloves were simply just better than these other companies. There's people out there saying, what about Louisville Slugger? Or Easton. They literally got bought by Rawlings and Wilson because they're like, hey, we don't like you. You're kind of a threat. We're going to buy you. And it just makes business sense because they probably make more money from it now. But in the past, buying from the main glove brands was definitely the right thing to do because the smaller brands made a worse glove, but they were selling it for the same price as the big ones. There's two main things happening with these small brands today. They're getting better and better at making gloves, and they're selling those gloves for cheaper. For a long time, a Heart of the Hide and an A2000 were both 250 bucks. Nowadays, it's $300 for the same glove. Yes, everything in the world is getting more expensive, but hear me out. On average, these small and medium-sized brands are actually selling their gloves for 230 bucks. Just to be clear, we're talking about high-quality leather. Plus, a lot of the small brands are offering custom gloves for the same price as their stock gloves. Whereas with Wilson, Rawlings, Mizuno, when you get custom, it's an extra 100, 150, almost $200 just to get it custom. Everyone out there right now is probably thinking the same thing. 44, 44, 44. If I'm being honest, yes. 44 is like a really big reason that a lot of this is happening. They kind of started a trend with small brands. 44 has basically called out big companies and said, hey, you can make a really good glove for way cheaper and both people win. We get a nice glove and we're happy and the company gets to make money. Something that a lot of you probably don't know, Rawlings, Wilson, Mizuno, almost every brand you can think of often are actually made in the same exact warehouse. Let's be clear. These brands have their own leather and their own shape to the actual glove so they're going to be very different but the people who are literally putting the glove together are the same i'm not trying to say any of this like it's a bad thing we need our big companies we need our small companies it's all great economy blah 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 this company has literally only existed for like a month maybe two months at most so how does it compare to this wilson we got to figure it out let's take ground balls we're going to talk about everything So we're gonna be focusing on our Wilson here because there's a couple of things that are kind of similar. The leather is actually way different. So we're not really gonna focus on how does this leather feel? How does this leather feel? It's more so how does the build feel? How is it constructed? Does it feel similar? Plus you guys can actually go check out the Bami Dahama shorts. Check them out on the website, ballgloveking.com. Yes, sir. I'll start by just saying that this glove felt great. By the way, this is Patriot Glove Company. Like I said, brand new. I put this thing in like the same category as all those other smaller brands. It feels great. It's a little bit cheaper. Thumbs up. What we're gonna do is compare these two gloves. We know there's major differences. One, this is like 350 to 400, and this is like 230 to 250. To start off, you guys, brown balls were very smooth. So the glove was very open. I felt like there was a lot of palm that I could use. I started off wearing this thing traditional, but I just went to in the pinky. It just felt a lot more comfortable. As you can see, we have dual welting on the glove, and the fingers do have a nice natural roll. A lot of times, the smaller brands, dual welting doesn't have a roll to the fingers. I personally just prefer when they have that little bit of a roll and then you can try to straighten them out if you don't like it. But a lot of times if a glove has dual welting and they're straight fingers, they just feel low quality for some reason. Point is, is that the shape of this thing is beautiful. If you wanted to close it with a one hinge, you obviously could, but naturally this thing has like two hinges. For the typical person out there, I would just say that both of these gloves are gonna take like a few weeks, maybe a month to get it to where you feel comfortable for like practice and things like that. But it might take you two or three months until you're ready to use it in game everybody's different. Point is, is that the break-in times were actually very similar for both of these gloves. Another thing people like to worry about are the laces. And just so you know, the laces on this thing really are high quality. They're nice, nothing to complain about. You don't need to worry. The laces are good. Both gloves have great leather. The shape is great on both gloves. So what is the actual difference to make us spend so much more money on this glove? To get the final answer, there's three main things. We already said that the shape is great. And yes, it is but there's a but. Wilson's will have extremely, extremely consistent shapes to their gloves, whereas smaller brands will be inconsistent at times. This glove right here is great. When it comes to the shape, I just have nothing bad to say. Point is, is sometimes you can get unlucky. Here's an example, For Him Glove Company. This is another tiny brand, and this glove isn't horrible or anything, but the shape on this glove is definitely far worse than the shape on this one. This is one of those gloves that kind of has a spot where the ball likes to just slide out. Honestly, it's not like that with all tiny companies, but it often is something that comes up. Point number two is just Wilson flat out has nicer leather. This leather isn't bad, but it's definitely cheaper and easier to like mass produce for all of these tiny glove companies. Now point number three actually makes the biggest difference and it's everything on the inside of the glove. All these tiny details, you might not even know some of them exists, you just don't pay attention to it. But Wilson, Rawlings, Mizuno, these bigger companies 
are just gonna take the cake every single time. You're really paying to make sure that this glove is built with high quality materials, things that are gonna make the glove last longer, keep its form better, and comfort is huge. Honestly, the biggest takeaway is that small brands have very basic insides. They have a thumb and a pinky loop and then just normal leather in the palm. Nowadays, it's actually normal for major companies to have these things called reinforced thumb loops. They're just padded, extremely comfortable, preventing things like thumb injuries. Palm liner is just way more comfortable, softer, but it's also providing quality to the glove still. It's not like it's making it worse. The stuff inside of these fingers is better. The thumb and the pinky inserts are better to hold a better flare. Now, hang on, there's one more thing and it really does matter, so just listen up. Do not sleep on the small brands. They make really nice gloves and they work great. If you were to give this glove to a pro player, like Brandon Crawford, he's gonna use it, he's gonna make it work, it might be uncomfortable, but it's not a bad glove whatsoever. Just so you guys know, small brands are usually super, super stiff when you first get them in the mail. This thing was crazy, it was an actual rock, and I accidentally dropped my whole car on it while we were filming this video. 